When was the last time you played an awesome AAA linear game? I asked myself the same question, and I finally settled on Uncharted 4? I can't think of another linear-based story game that I've played in the last two years. I can't believe it's been that long. Hellblade is maybe as close as it gets this year, but it was a half-price game. Prey really doesn't count, more of a do-it-yourself kind of game. Dark Souls 3? Nope. Almost an open-world game hiding its linear path with little guidance through its cryptic-style story, if you could call it that. Shadow of War? Open world. So yeah, I guess it's been about a year and a half for me with Uncharted 4. Why is it so hard to find a really good story-based linear video game? Today it seems like the word linearity is bad juju, a scarlet letter, a badge of shame. I lament the recent closure of Visceral Games. The company was in hot developments of a brand new, linear, story-based Star Wars game. It's once again another example of linear games getting the shaft. Let's face it, that game may never see the light of day. So it's about time we entered the hard question on this channel. What is going on with linearity and video games? Once upon a time ago, we had a lot of really great linear video games. The story-based linear video game is my favorite type of game. I'm enamored by the Uncharted series, The Last of Us, Tomb Raider, and some of the old Splinter Cell games. Any game where the narrative is tailor-made specifically for my enjoyment. But the handcrafted adventure is being replaced as we speak. Half-Life 2 is often considered one of the greatest video games of all time and is fiercely linear, as are most Bioshock games. What was so wrong with Batman Arkham Asylum that we had to wave goodbye and adopt the open world of Arkham Knight? The upcoming Metro is also following suit, going way more open world than Last Light. And then of course Zelda also went open world with Breath of the Wild, as did Metal Gear Solid and The Witcher. The examples are endless. The Witcher 2 was an incredibly linear game and sits at the crossroads of old versus new design in video games. You began the game by sieging up a castle with the army of King Foltest. There were some really epic cutscenes to get you pumped up. Especially that cutscene with Triss in the tent. You guys know what I'm talking about. What's going on, Triss? How you doing, baby? So after you hit up some nice sex, the king gets whamboozled and Geralt is to blame. Then he escapes to Flotsam after being interrogated by Roach, and the game kicks it into OD at this point. It's an exciting introduction, and the rest of the game never lets up. An awesome 20 hour linear quest with a heavy emphasis on storytelling and character development. The good stuff. Now there are a few side quests here and there and some optional things, but the path to the end is pretty much a straight arrow. Linear video games allow the game developer to set the pace of the game, sorting out the highs and the lows and the ebb and flow akin to a good book. If done right, the classic story arc sometimes emerges. In other games, the player just does whatever he wants, which can be a bad thing for providing climactic storytelling. The classic example has got to be something like Fallout 4. Your mission, find your son. Sounds like a priority, right? Especially since your wife just got frickin' murdered? Alas, you can spend 150 hours messing around with all manner of pointless things irrelevant to the story. Call me crazy, but I'm not so sure that setting up antennas for the railroad or clearing camps for the Brotherhood is going to help you find your son that much quicker. But they sure do pad out that length. Side quests in open world games provide the one thing that people must have, that breadcrumb trail of goodies to fill up that old familiar XP bar. Find some hidden caches or recover some synths for the Institute, and Fallout 4 and your bar will fill up a little bit more, and you'll grab some extra cash. Cash will get you access to more locked off gear, and XP access to more locked off stats. Everything is arbitrary to keep you playing, motivating you through digital incentives. It's a numbers game, and people love seeing progress. But I would argue that the progress should be transferred to the development of its storytelling machine. For instance, progress in The Last of Us is about you getting more comfortable with increasingly difficult combat scenarios, 
rewarding you not with levels or skill points, but with a sense of achievement. Progression doesn't have to be a number. Open world games can be great, but they are kind of silly when you think about them. Maybe an NPC will thank you for gathering him those 10 juicy raisins that are sitting conveniently outside of his house, but then never do anything with them. Or help a man find his lost love, but then have him neglect to ever mention the deed in the future, even if you explore optional dialogue. Ignore a critical mission in any open world game for 50 hours and see what happens. Absolutely nothing, even when time is of the essence. It's not to say that every game does this, but much of it has been lost to modern design and open world games these days. For instance, when the Baron in Witcher 3 begs you to find his missing wife, watch him then stand in a corner for 50 hours while you raid bandit camps. Come back to him prior to completing the objective and he acts like nothing has happened. No time seems like it has ever passed in the game world. The sun may set, the moon may rise every night cycle, but nothing is really happening. The same could be said for any game, but at least it gets veiled in linear games because the story keeps moving and you're forced to stay on board. Despite the dissonance, this happened when The Witcher 3 went open world. It's my second favorite game of all time and honestly, it's hard to find faults with. It's the game that did open world right for me. It gave you meaningful things to do and tried to make everything else seem important. It's about the best open world games can really do right now, to mimic that feeling of urgency that linear games can provide. And yet, one of the biggest marketing pushes for The Witcher 3 was its length. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. But is more better though? Our culture is training us that more is better, when in fact I would argue that better is better. If you feel that way too, we are the minority. It's hard to justify the creation of linear games when more and more people opt in for open world experiences these days. Many of them want to see the word value stamped above every game purchase, as money is limited and they can only buy so many games. You can't blame people for wanting a game to last a long time, but it's not just about the individual anymore. Linear video games are in jeopardy of materializing into thin air, disappearing from existence, bowing to their open world and mobile gaming overlords. Sadly, they pop up so infrequently only when a, a revered company takes the very brave step forward with a game such as The Last of Us. For everybody else, the risk is just way too high and the payoff way too uncertain. Whether people have forgotten this or not, most video game companies are publicly traded, and they have one goal in mind, to generate money. Developers may have the passion that publishers are blinded by, but they don't make the final calls. Do you really think that DICE has the final say with Battlefront? Providing us with an amazing game is secondary to securing financial success. It's why we've seen such a huge shift towards games as a service and open worlds to extend a game's ability to generate revenue over the course of a long haul. The longer a game stays relevant and played, the more opportunity to make money. With so many entry points, day one sales, microtransactions, season passes, DLC, multiplayer components, it's no wonder why linear games are being left in the dust. They simply can't compete in a market that demands otherwise. Linear video games can be absolutely beautiful. The benefits are numerous and often underappreciated. The coolest part about linear games is that they are handcrafted. They can be injected with crises, climax, and resolution in a time frame that best suits its content. Do-it-yourself stories often lack the refinement of a tailored experience as they focus too heavily on filler content. I would argue that we should think of open worlds as a backdrop for supporting the game's story. Are they necessary for the development of what's important in a game? Do they add value to my experience? I want to see less go anywhere, do anything games, the do it yourself stories, and more fine tuned linear experiences. But I'm not sure if the shift will ever circle back. The sad truth is that linear video games are going to have to find the sweet spots between story and adding value. <laughs> Just kidding. Just like open world games do. My hope is that one day we can get back to the good place in gaming. 
where open world isn't better. Better is better. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this controversial linear versus open world topic down below in the comment section. Have a great day, and we'll see you in our next video.